Okay, in this first tutorial, uh, I'm going to teach you how to set up your introduction, introduce um, the aim of your project, along with an introductory sentence that outlines what the uh, project is going to be about, and then the first main paragraph that you will be writing, which will be um, examining the Bradshaw model and why we need to understand the Bradshaw model in the context of this project, because obviously that is what our main focus is about. So the first thing you're going to want to do is open up your uh, student guide for the hire, if you hadn't done so yet, as well as the main document um, here in your step one, which is uh, going to be where you write um, your work. And over the next series of uh, lessons, you're going to be gradually constructing your project, uh, which will obviously include a, a trip to the river um, to gather the data. Um, and it will then be processed uh, and you'll then be able to write up your findings and a conclusion. So today's work is gonna be written in your introduction down here. Um, and if you type all work uh, that relates to the introduction in this section. Okay, so let's have a little look at what you're being asked to do. So if we go into the main student guidelines uh, and it'll outline, uh, you'll see that there's instructions on how to do an introduction. If we scroll down, through the first page, it, you might choose to pause uh, the video now and just have a little read about this if you haven't um, yet reviewed it with uh, your teacher in class. Um, and what I'm first gonna ask you to do is read this very first page, okay? Um, so what I would do is pause the video right now and just have a read. It basically introduces this idea about why we investigate things uh, anything that we investigate, we do so in geography because we're trying to test theories to see whether those theories are more accurate on the basis of the results we've gathered or maybe less accurate. It's very similar to what scientists do all the time when they conduct experiments to test whether the theory is accurate or not. So please have a read of this. Um, there is the structure of the actual um, report that you're going to be writing, and you'll see that in your main um, document, which you're typing into. And then you've got this a little bit of information, which is quite important because everything that you generate in class that you type up, whether it's done in class or uh, set as a homework, will need to be learned and reproduced under timed conditions, one and a half hours, um, assuming you get regular time for this. Um, and you'll be typing that up. Um, in that period of time. Therefore, you must make sure that um, you don't overwrite. Um, clearly, uh, this is a timed exercise, so that's an important part. All right, let's move on to uh, the first part of this introduction. Now, this is just the first tutorial of a number of tutorials that I, I'm gonna do. Um, and uh, the very first thing we're gonna have to do is set up our aim for this project. Now, the way you write an aim, an aim clearly has to state what you are intending to achieve. OK, so what we are trying to achieve here is to test the validity and it says it there uh, or you could say the accuracy. That is another word you could use instead of validity of this model. So we'll talk more about the Bradshaw's model in a second, but we are testing whether this model is accurate or valid. Um, in terms of how it explains how a river should change downstream. Um, and part of that testing process involves us going to a river to gather data to actually test it. So we're going to be testing this model against a real river. So how do you write that as a name? Well, you need to be able to say that um, the aim of this project will be to, uh, you know, test the, the accuracy or the validity of uh, Bradshaw's model uh, in how it explains the, the downstream changes of the river. What you then will probably want to say is to do this, um, I intend to visit a river, um, gather data, which will allow me to uh, see how accurate the model was in, th in theorizing or in trying to help us understand how rivers change as you move downstream. So I've narrated to you, you don't need to type it exactly um, the way I'm saying it. It's something that's unique to you, but you want to clearly outline what the aim, what you are trying to achieve. So you want to, and the basic idea is you're wanting to see how accurate or how valid this model is by testing it against a real river. Okay, that's step one. Step two is uh, this next bit here, which is where we need to outline what Bradshaw's model actually is. Okay. Uh, and we need to do that with a sort of general description. So you can scroll to the end of this document uh, where you'll find Appendix A, which shows you 
Bradshaw's model. Uh, I've gone onto Wikipedia uh, just to show, uh, to, sorry, to get an image of Bradshaw's model. Here we are. And that is Bradshaw's model there. You may remember this from the hydrosphere topic uh, we did um, before the summer. Okay. Um, if I bring up Wikipedia, first of all, you can see uh, Wikipedia has a, a reasonably good description. You're not going to want to write all of that, but you are going to try to represent what that says. So the reader can understand what Bradshaw's model is without looking at it. So you could pause this and read it and summarize it in your own words, or you could just kind of listen to me now as I go through what the model is. So the first thing about the model is it visualizes as a, as a form of diagram what a river does from its upstream, and that would be in the mountains, to its downstream, and that's towards the end of its life when it's about to join the sea. And it looks at each characteristic of the river, it breaks it down into a number of characteristics. In this case, we can see there are uh, 10 characteristics. Um, starting with discharge, an example of a characteristic would be discharge. And then what it uses is triangles to help us visualize that change or help us understand. That's the first thing. That's what Bradshaw's model is doing. It's helping us show how a range of different characteristics of a river like discharge uh, change. And does it through triangles. And how does it do the triangles? Well, the triangles either get larger, as we can see with discharge, they start very small at the tip and they get a large base or they get narrower like load particle size here which is starting wide and getting smaller and what that helps us do is it shows us whether that characteristic in this case discharge is either increasing as you go downstream or like these three here and turbulence friction here whether it is decreasing now you might at this point give an example just to illustrate this you could say so for example Bradshaw's model showed discharge starting small or being very low in the upstream phase and getting significantly larger by the downstream phase. Okay, that's the first thing the model shows. The second thing the model shows is actually to do with the size of the triangle. So we can see with discharge, the size of the triangle is very large, whereas in comparison, velocity is a very small triangle. So is slope angle, so is load particle size. And what that means is it tells us about the amount of change we'd expect to see. So discharge Bradshaw expected to show a dramatic increase from the upstream part of a river to the downstream part of a river. In contrast, the depth he expected to not change anywhere near the same extent as the discharge. Okay. Uh, likewise, the load quantity, that's the amount that the river is actually carrying, would increase more. That's the amount of pebbles and rocks and sand. Whereas the size of the stuff it's carrying would actually get smaller as we move downstream. Okay, so that's me outlining Bradshaw's model. And you would want a very good description with some examples to illustrate this uh, to pick up your first main knowledge mark. Now, there's an opportunity here to pick up a second mark. This is by no means necessary, but you can do this. Um, if you want to go a little bit further and actually tell us why should we trust Bradshaw's model? Well, I've got gone on to Wikipedia here and found uh, this little kind of outline about Bradshaw's model. Where did it come from? Um, is this just somebody sitting in their room making something up or or is this actually something worth testing? OK, and what we find out is that this person called MJ Bradshaw uh, actually came up with the model to help us or to illustrate rivers uh, and how they change. And he did it in a high school textbook, actually. Um, and that was in the United States called The Earth's Changing Surface. OK, so it wasn't him that actually came up with the idea. He was the person that just put it into a nice simplified model like I was just showing you. Um, actually, the idea of how rivers came was just a simplification of this man here and all of his research. And so this man had uh, published a model, a very complex model. You can look it up online if you want, but it's quite difficult to understand compared to Bradshaw's model. And he had published a year before in 1977 in a, an article uh, in the fluvial system. Fluvial just means water, to do with water. Uh, and he was basically taking his idea, taking the ideas of things he had published over the previous 10 years. Um, so it was kind of the culmination of 10 years of research. And he had based his ideas or his model on um, what we call empirical analysis. Now, what that means is he'd gathered loads of data on a whole range of North American rivers. So he had gone into rivers from the 
upstream to the downstream and got data on them, starting where they begin, you know, at the source and all the way down to the mouth of the river on loads and loads of rivers and had done research to see how rivers change. And he had done hundreds of rivers and he'd done it over 10 years. And he'd finally published an article in 1977 in the Fluvial System that had all of that summarized. But it was very complex and difficult possibly to understand. So what Bradshaw was doing, so high school students could understand it, is he had simplified it into this model here. Now, why would you be giving me a little bit of an idea of this? Because what you then have to say, and this is where you'd actually get the mark if you choose to tell me about the origins of Bradshaw model, is that we would trust it because it's, first of all, it's, it's a published model. It's appeared in a high school textbook. It's also based on a academic uh, called Stanley Shroom's research over 10 years, where he's gathered data on hundreds of North American rivers. So it's it, you, we, we would have to go, this is not just somebody coming up with an idea because they saw one river. This is an extensive piece of academic research. And for those reasons, because it's already published both in a, a magazine called The Fluvial System and in a high school textbook by Bradshaw, we start to gain a lot of faith that the model must be reasonably accurate in what it's trying to show. Right. At this point, you're, uh, you've described the Bradshaw model uh, using some decent detail in a way that helps me if I'm the reader and I know nothing about Bradshaw model to understand it. Um, I wouldn't even need to look at the model um, and actually see it. I, you could describe it and show and, and explain what's going on in that model. And you will pick up your first mark. If you go a little bit further and want to um, maybe tell me why we really want to trust this model, um, you would pick up a second mark. You, you don't need to do the second stage. You will, I will show you how to pick up marks later on in other ways. Um, what's key here is you don't overwrite this. You should have a one detailed paragraph on the model. And if you choose to do a second detailed more paragraph that outlines why we should trust the model, once you've done that, you should then go and watch the, the second tutorial in this series, which is going to outline uh, factors that can influence discharge downstream and allows you to pick up a range of marks um, on, on that particular factor.